Okay, we'll start the session today, and today we'll uh, see the topic JDBC. JDBC is basically Java Database Connectivity, and why we require JDBC? We need to understand. So, when you develop any application, right? So, as of now, what we have seen, like we were writing Java classes and we were uh, creating some objects in the main method and trying to like uh, run those programs. But when you write some real time program, so you might require huge amounts of data, right? Suppose in a you are working in a firm and that has some enterprise applications. So there is some kind of data layer right where all the data needs to be stored your entire data cannot be stored in some uh, file or in some application itself right so that application needs to interact to some data layer and that data layer is basically your database so what i mean by database database is a collection of tables and schemas that would contain all of your information and we will see how our application can interact with the database to fetch those data or to make some update to the to those data so that data layer basically stores the entire information that is the source of truth for your application so when i uh, talk about the database D database is kind of like collection of tables and then that particular table there can be like n number of tables in a database and those particular tables will have certain fields with certain information i'll show you those structures as well so let's understand that our application needs to interact with the data layer and the data layer basically contains your database. So how our application will communicate with the database to fetch the information or to like insert some information or to make some updates to those information, we will uh, see about that. So th that is why Java database connectivity is very important. Now our application, we are basically writing application in Java as of now. So that's why there needs to be some drivers how those drivers can help to connect with the database we'll see uh, these things so uh, in this module we'll basically see we'll go through jdbc basics jdbc basically stands for java database connectivity and we will see how we can connect to database and then we'll perform some operations and then we will see what is the use of prepared statements Pre prepared statements is kind of like an interface which is important in uh, java database connectivity so see what does jdbc do jdbc establishes a connection with a data source so data source is basically your database so database contains your entire data and this application that we are writing in java needs to connect with that database so for connection purpose means without making a connection you cannot cannot communicate with the database so first you need to like establish some connection so this jdbc will help us to do that thing and then this jdbc also helps and in, helps us in sending queries and update statements to the data source so if you want to like insert some data or make some updates to some existing data then jdbc will help you to do that it helps in like processing the results as well so whatever data that we fetch from uh, the database it helps to retrieve those results as well and we have something called like stored processes and functions those are like higher concepts means stored processor is kind of a like program which is written in a uh, query language query language when i say speak about query language it's like uh, the database itself has some kind of its own programming uh, language so 
that is kind of like a stored procedure so if you write a series of queries in some program that is kind of a stored procedure but we'll see here how our database interacts with help of some queries w when i talk about queries queries means sql queries like the database queries means suppose you have some table in your database like an employee table and that employee table basically contains uh, let's say three four uh, information like it contains the employee id it contains the employee name and then it contains the department that they are working in and it contains the salary of each of the employees and you want to like fetch some uh fetch the uh, information of one of the employees so let's say you know the employee id of that person so you write a query and that query is basically called sql query so how that query would look like there are some uh, queries in uh, sql like select star from employee so when you use select star from employee you would basically like fetch the information so select query is basically used for fetching the information and you can give in your where clause like where employee id is let's say one two three four five how many of you are like already aware of database i need to like uh means if you can write some simple queries and all how many of you are like a little bit aware of databases Hello. Uh, say, say again, please, the question. Yeah. Uh, how, how many of you are like aware of database? If you can uh, write some simple queries, I'm not expecting like an expertise, but like uh, some insert queries or update queries or select queries. If you are aware of that, it's fine. Or otherwise, I'll show you like how we can uh, write some queries. Okay, some of you already know, but I'll still yeah. write some queries, and then you will be like able to understand. Okay, so. I'll show you on the SQL uh, terminal like how we can write some queries. So, so these are the basic functionalities which JDBC can do. Uh, it can establish a connection with your database. It can help to write uh, queries related with the database like fetching information, updating information or inserting new information. And it can help to like process those results which are retrieved from the database. And it can also help to call any stored procedure or function. So let's see how this is done using the, let's see how this is done, uh, how your application basically interacts with your database. So in this diagram, you basically see that there's a Java program, right? So you are writing Java program and at the bottom, you see this is like Oracle database, MS SQL Server 2000, Sybase database. So uh, at the bottom that in the diagram, you are seeing some database. These three are some examples of a database. And how the communication can happen between your Java program and these databases. So this is driven by some API. So Java provides some libraries. It provides some JDBC API. And that JDBC API basically has to connect with the help of some drivers. So there are some drivers for each of those databases. So when I talk about Oracle, there's some Oracle, uh, some driver to connect to Oracle database. Then there is some uh, different driver to connect with the MySQL database. So your Java program basically needs this kind of drivers to connect to the database. 
so these drivers are kind of like a middleware in between the java program and the database so your application uses these drivers to connect to the database so we'll see in the example as well how uh, these drivers are basically helping in connecting with the database so you understood this diagram right here is your application layer that is the java program you are writing and below is the data layer that is the database and your application needs to communicate with the database and that is when this application would need the help of this jdbc api which will provide the drivers and these drivers will help in communicating with the database and in communicating what i mean is it will help in establishing the connection and once the connection is established you can perform different operations on the database so let's go to another slide see we'll see how we can basically uh, execute a simple select query so these are basically some of the steps to load the appropriate driver so first we need to load the appropriate driver if we are using an oracle database or if you are using a mysql database we have different drivers for each of them we will see how we need to like load the driver and then once the driver is loaded what we need to do we need to like establish a connection that connection needs to be between our application that is the java program and the database so we will establish some kind of connection and then we need to create some kind of like statement or prepared statement that is like part of the program means there is some interface in the jdbc which helps in like running our sql queries and then we need to like execute that query so once we uh, execute that query we kind of get a result set and that result set basically contains information let's say i have run a query like select star from employee so i got like five records suppose the employee table contained five records and then uh, once i uh, fetch those five records i need to like print each of those records so actually in our program when i get those five records that is called a result set so result set is basically the set of records that are fetched from the database and once i get those records what i will basically do i will use this result set api to retrieve each of this each of those records and then we can like process the result set like we can print out or we can try to like use that particular result set to uh, uh, like further process that particular information and then we need to like close the result set statement and connection i'll explain each of these steps while we are writing the program to connect with the database okay i'll show this example in the uh, id okay so i'll also show you how basically you can uh, how you can uh, create your own mysql uh, database and also how you can what are the things you require to basically connect your database i'll send out these links on your zoom so this is your mysql client you need a mysql client or some mysql application we will use mysql to connect to the database here so i am sending you the link for mysql client you can use this mysql workbench and for the people who are using windows you can like select this microsoft windows and then download this one and the people who are using any other operating system like linux or mac os can select the respective option and then you can download this and after that you uh, you need a mysql connector jar as well so i'm sending out the link for that as well on the zoom chat
So, see, you can download these two things and you can uh, download, once you are trying to download this MySQL connector jar, you can select this 8.0.11 and you can like select this platform independent. So when you select this platform independent jar, that will basically help in uh, connecting at any platform. Suppose let's say you are using Windows or I'm using Mac or if anyone is using Linux OS, it will still help to connect with that particular uh, database. So these are the prerequisites. You need one MySQL client and you need a MySQL jar. If you are trying to like do it now, then I can like help in the installation and those processes as well. Otherwise, I already have this MySQL installed on my system. So I can, uh, if you want to like uh, perform the installation and uh, go along with me, then I can uh, help uh, you to get installed and like you can also write down the programs on your own. Otherwise, I'll continue with the demo. Are you like downloading these things as of now? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Select these options like. And anyone who wants to like share the screen says that it, once these are like downloaded, means these are like very small files, it should be downloaded right away. And in the installation, I can like help you if anyone wants to like share the screen because I am not using Windows. So uh, anyone who wants to like volunteer, share the screen so that I can like guide you in the installation process. Alright, I I installed already. You uh, you guess so you are trying to install? No, I have already my SQL. Uh... Yeah. You already have my SQL. Uh, anyone else? Who yeah, is? I also have it. Yep. Uh, Freddy, you also have my SQL? Yes, I have. I'm already installed. Okay. Uh, Admasu. Uh, okay. I will share you. Okay, uh, so let me unshare my screen and can you share your screen? We'll go along. Okay. Uh, can you uh, have you like downloaded both the things? Okay, you're still downloading. Can you scroll below? Click on that uh, download. Uh, no, 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 wait, 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 no, wait, can you scroll below and just click on, no, thanks, no, thanks, okay. just start my download. Yeah, it's downloaded. Can you go to the downloads folder? So everyone can follow along and you can also download and try to install this. Admasu, can you go to your downloads folder?
no no you can uh, okay first let's try to install that thing or or yeah, you can it's, uh, uh, it's, it's downloaded okay you can scroll below so this is my sequel okay you have already my sequel okay you, yeah yeah you have already downloaded this so can you okay can you go to the downloads folder yeah it's already opened no no downloads folder in your system this must have been downloaded somewhere right you have yes, your c drive c drive and the downloads folder right yes there is a download uh, downloads folder can you uh, it's downloaded it says my sql sql workbench community yes Eight yes point... can you share okay. that screen i can only see your browser okay how can i share you my downloads uh you can share it right uh no no can you like go to your uh uh what is the issue entire screen i am sharing you yeah yeah screen. okay yeah this time you need to like share your entire screen uh you had only shared your browser at that time i <laughs> okay okay can you see now yeah yeah i can see i need to see your downloads folder yes yeah click on this double click on this everyone can like follow along okay yeah you can you click on okay okay you can okay my sql workbench ended prematurely why uh, your system has not been modified to compl- can you just scroll a little below what's the error you are see which one the download, download a prerequisites and finish no 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 don't click on finish i think you were not able to complete should this. i should i go ahead and uh, read uh, download it no no downloading is not the option wait 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 can you click on that download prerequisites do you have some memory issue or something in your system no okay uh okay can you again go to that uh, downloads win uh, downloads folder? folder yes downloads folder not the uh, where is browser where where yeah can you uh, again try to like uh down uh, double click yes Okay. Okay. Your system has not been modified. Okay. Uh, anyone else who downloaded this MySQL Workbench on Windows? I did it for like Mac. I did not face any issue. Guess up, Freddy. Ah, uh, yeah. For mine, I think. Three years ago or three years ago? <laughs> oh, you did it long back, right? Okay. Yeah, long back. Mm. Can you like remove that zoom? Uh, you uh, okay? Yeah, the wizard ha- was interrupted because my SQL workbench could be installed. Your system has not been modified. To complete another time, please run setup again. Okay. Can you close this window? This one. Yes. Can you uh, just go and right click on this one? Right click. Uh, do you see any run option? Uh, so okay. Wait a minute. I'll see if there is another another uh, download option. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Today, uh, uninstall it and uh, reinstall it. You still have not like uh, installed it. Anyone else who has who wants to like volunteer to go ahead with the installation? I'm not sure if you are having some issues with your system. Uh, for my side, I tried, but it is not asked like very much. So, uh, sorry, guess, sir. Yeah, I tried for my uh, window, uh, it is not asked like so, like uh, very much. Yeah, it did not ask, right? Uh, can, can you yeah. show your share your screen once, guess, sir? Admasu, can you stop yeah. share? Yeah, see, this is how you should get. Once you download that MySQL community, Workbench community, you will get this screen. Can you go to next? Uh, can you again go to next? Yeah, okay. This one from here. Let me yeah. change. Maybe I have the old one. Uh, but it needs to be in the program files itself. Okay, it will go along. We'll not finish it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. okay. Complete custom. Complete. Okay. Uh, one. Uh, then you need to like click on install basically. So there's nothing like you need to like follow along. You need to just provide uh, this you need to like just go with the normal flow just click on next 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 and you can click on install once you do this right basically yeah you, yeah, you can basically uh, it will ask for uh, can you open this application yeah you, you you already have that installed right you can open that application so basically it will ask you once you open this it will ask you to set up some connection with the database so yeah uh can yeah. you try to click on one of the database yeah connection yeah. Is it? yeah okay so, so you can use plus sign yeah yeah plus you sign. can click on plus sign so uh, okay i'll i'll take it from here yeah so so everyone saw how gaso was like installing the application right so you can just uh double click and just follow next next and uh, you can complete the installation since it is already installed for gas so it is already installed for me as well so we need to like uninstall so but there is nothing extra that you need to do and uh okay guess so you can unshare your screen i'll carry on from here here hi um uh, freedom yeah so i already downloaded but um so it's on the application but i can't set it up you know like um mine is mark okay you have mac right so yeah. what you can do is like uh, you can select this 8.0.34 you can select this uh, mac os so you must yeah, have already uh, downloaded right right it's already downloaded but so, when i tried to just set up um yeah when, so uh, what you can do uh, i'll explain so let's okay. say i had also done this few days back in this system okay so wherever let's say you have that application in your downloads folder then what you can do you can drag that application to your applications folder so once I did. You, you did right so mm -hmm. once you do that uh, you double click on that means can you share your screen that would be handy like what is yes. you're facing okay i'm okay. stopping this here okay so for those who are using Windows, Gaso already so showed. So you can like follow those steps to set up this MySQL Workbench. So can you see my screen? Now? Yes. Can you drag that DMG file to your application folder? This one? Yes. To the application? Yes. 
can you go to this applications folder can you expand this window to the maximum yes, yes. can you double click on that uh, dmg file right dmg to, yeah yeah right to music next to music icon you have that mysql dot uh, dmg right you see right here okay this one or okay can you like on the right one you can uh, delete that thing i know i'm not sure yeah move to trash or move to bin anything move to trash um, okay yeah we'll see again no right, uh, double click on that okay yeah so yeah. i can move this from yes to here right? yes yes that's what i did earlier yeah it's copying let's wait for a minute okay Okay, one more important information while we install this. We'll be starting Spring Boot from tomorrow. So kindly uh, do not miss the classes because the base classes are the most important ones. You need to understand the concepts. Okay. Yeah. Can you now go to the applications? So uh, this one, right? Yeah. Right? Can, you, can you double click on that? Uh, it's why is that you want to use this version with the version of your yeah, mac os uh, the application requires mac 13 os or later okay you might we have the latest one, okay, right? okay 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 i gave you the latest one okay can you like go to that downloads uh, can you go to the browser the browser yeah yeah where you were downloading you might need some other means your os is not compatible with this one i think you have an older version of the os uh, okay mm -hmm. can you go to that mysql's workbench downloads page no okay do you need the link this one right here the no, bench no, no. you see no, no 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 uh, go to the browser and i'll oh, i will give you chrome. one yeah on the chrome i'll give you that link okay i've i've pasted that link on this oh on the okay on the zoom chat i've just sent you on the zoom chat okay yeah can you just open that uh, okay let's do one thing select that version product version that you're seeing and let's scroll below let's scroll below on the way here yeah yeah can you scroll further below yes yeah wait yeah, wait 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 not that uh, <laughs> all right okay or uh you can select 8.0.12 just the version above that yeah let's try seeing that uh okay can you download this one yeah yeah i think your os version is quite uh old uh supply that's why it did not work out okay let's try doing this one okay okay you should have gone to that okay we can do this way as well okay can you do this one? yeah yeah replace can you go to the applications now uh, yes so yeah yeah this looks fine uh, can you double click on that everyone you can follow this this is again the same thing okay welcome to work sir no i uh, think it worked right no 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 did you double mm -hmm. click on that can you again? no no plus sign plus sign let's go plus sign where all right here okay it's already i think you have uh, it's the installation was done okay it can is you... not connected yeah yeah so i have to connect to the wi-fi 
no 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 so uh, let's say you can give the uh, you can give some name here you can just provide some name test underscore db underscore hmm. db and in the username is root fine in the password you can go ahead click on that password store in keychain you see that option yes uh, provide welcome one w welcome and after that provide one and did you provide the password i did okay you did uh, can you click can on you just first? yeah you okay can you open this okay this is fine so you will get a window something like this and are you not able to okay this is not highlighted for you mm. okay can you also do one thing can you do control s and command s and try to search for mysql command s and then uh, okay wait a minute server status is being sona stopped okay uh, are you able to click on that red symbol that you are seeing server status right here no 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 the red symbol oh, right here. the status so we... oh the red right here uh, is anything happening once you click on that no okay C can you do do a command s and try to search for mysql mm. should no. i just say uh, okay uh, let me share my screen uh, sublevels can okay okay uh, not there okay Okay, do one thing. Uh, follow along with me. Okay. Yeah, go to the system settings or system preferences, whatever you have on your Mac, and then go ahead and search like MySQL here. Right. Once you go, uh, uh, once you are able to search this MySQL. You will see one installed instances and you will see one active instance. So click mm -hmm. on that active instance. Are you able to follow along until here? Um, yes. Yeah. So if it is like stopped MySQL server, right? Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead and try to click on start MySQL server. Um, okay. And also, yeah. Or you can just go ahead and I will ask a question later if, you know. Okay, you, you, you can do this step, but I'm just showing you. And you can also initialize the database from here. Once you click okay. on this, see, you can uh, give the same password, like welcome one, and then one. try to click on here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But you need to do this, right? You need to select this active instance and then you need to like start the MySQL server. So once you do that, right, once you're able to do that, you will be able to go here. And this was like not getting highlighted for you, right? So mm -hmm. this will also be highlighted for you. Okay. You got it? Yes. Okay. So uh, I'll resume the classes. Means we'll go ahead with the further JDBC connectivity, otherwise the entire time will go in the installation. I think everyone was able to follow along. I think uh, also you can communicate with Gaso and Freddy offline. If they have like already installed, they can like help you with this as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. But, but I've shown you the steps how you can basically... Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'll show you some select queries and some queries how we basically write down some queries so let's say as of now i have this test db that we created and in this test db i want some employee table so this table i have already created let's say i want to create a new table let's say i want to create a new table so i'll write down create 
टेबल वन सेकेंड ओके या सो व्हाट यू कैन डू इस लेट से यू वांट टू क्रिएट अ न्यू टेबल सो यू कैन डू समथिंग लाइक क्रिएट टेबल लेट से आई वांट टू क्रिएट अ स्टूडेंट टेबल सो आई विल डू समथिंग लाइक क्रिएट टेबल स्टूडेंट एंड लेट से आई वांट सम टू थ्री फील्ड्स लाइक आई वांट टू लाइक क्रिएट द आईडी ऑफ दैट स्टूडेंट एंड देन आई नीड टू लाइक क्रिएट अ नेम ऑफ दैट स्टूडेंट एंड लेट से एड्रेस सो व्हाट आई विल डू इज I'll provide um, ID and then I need to like provide which kind of okay yeah TJ I'll provide that table query as well yeah create table student ID and let's say this is of integer type so what I can do is integer int and then let's say name name would be of varchar so varchar is basically like string data type and then i need address address would also be of string data type so we would need varchar id would be basically integer type so let's try to okay we are seeing i am getting some kind of like error right okay one second so let me try to run this one okay so you can run this i'll provide this query to each one of you i'll paste it on the zoom chat so this is like an uh, student table so similarly you can create other uh, tables as well means you can write down create table and this is the name of the table like student table and this is like id id is of type integer so that's why i have written like integer and not null this is like some kind of constraint not null means this id cannot be null you have to like insert something in this particular id field and then what you see name name is of type text i think my sql is supporting text for string so this address is also of string type right so you can give text and this is like creation of a table so you are able to create a table so everyone who has got the query can try it out on themselves on their system as well and if you want to basically fetch some data from this as of now we don't have any data right we have just created a table so you can do something like select star from student so select this and you this see this flash type 
per, uh, button over here right this is for executing click on this one see see you are seeing the result grid id name and address but you are not seeing any data here right you're not seeing any data so this is why you have not inserted any data as of now so you need to insert some data in this so let's say i am inserting into this table so there is another query insert into table name so i'll write down student and what are the fields that you want to insert your values into so i want to insert id name and then address let's say you just want to insert into two of the fields so you can like exclude this address but as of now i need to like let's say i am passing some values like one one is the id let's say i'm passing some value like john this will be in single quotes and let's say you i'm passing the address let's say ca so let me try to select this and try to execute this so i was able to run this query now if i run this select query see i'm getting some result right i'm getting a record here so everyone able to follow these queries these are these queries are very simple if you are able to follow this uh, can you please respond if you got all the three queries yes. how we created the table how we fetched data from that particular table and how we inserted data into that particular table so these are some basic sql queries that you need to perform so we'll see we we need these queries at least this is some of the basic knowledge of the query that we require to perform our jdbc connectivity program so let's go to the editor so one more thing i have also some employee table already created and i'll show you that information as well i'll do a select start from employee let me try to run this see i have some data already in this particular table means i have inserted some data with these queries like insert into employee and then employee id name department and then i've given some values so you can uh, insert values here with this help of queries so let me uh try uh, to demonstrate the jdbc example now so we'll create a package here and also one more thing we need that jar that we downloaded sable were you there when uh, i downloaded that jar one there was one mysql connector jar i think uh, okay so for those of you who uh missed out you need the mysql connector jar as well so what you can do you can go to this mysql connector jar product version you can select 8.0.11 and you can select this platform independent and once you select this platform independent you can click the second option like this zip archive you can click on the zip archive and what you can do you can go to your downloads folder and see you can extract that zip you can try to extract that zip so you will get this jar file you will get this jar jar file so what you need to do is in your ide in your ide you go to this file you go to this uh, project structure and then you click on libraries and then you click on this plus symbol you click on this java and then you go to the downloads folder you select that mysql connector jar
click on ok everyone trying uh, is able to follow me so you see this jar getting imported to your library this is the lib folder basically so this is because your java runtime environment jre needs that particular jar to run your jdbc program so what we are basically doing we are adding that particular jar to your java runtime environment when i click on this external libraries you can see this mysql connector jar over here right it is anyone wants me to again repeat this yeah can you repeat it um, yeah so what i did was i downloaded that mysql connector jar and then i extracted that zip folder so once you extract that zip folder you have this mysql connector jar in your some downloads folder now what you need to do you need to go to file project structure you need to go to libraries you need to click on this plus symbol once you click on this plus, plus symbol you need to click on java you need to again go to the downloads folder where you had that uh, uh, jar you need to click on this you need to click on this and then you need to click on open and once you click on open just apply and press ok so once you do this your jar should be visible here once you click this external libraries your mysql jar should be available here so this mysql connector jar is now available in your java runtime environment so this jar is important for your java application to communicate with your data layer that is your database so now i'll write down the program how we can try to connect to our database i'll show you the program now so let me create a package let me name it as jdbc jar or database connectivity and i'll create a class okay and let's say i'll um create a class name employee employee jdbc okay okay let me name it as let me name it as employee what will basically do here in this or let me name it as like i'll name it as jdbc demo so you might it might help you to recall why we were using this program okay i'll create one main method here and what i will do now is we need i when i was showing you that slide i talked about creating a connection right so we need to create a connection uh, so that your application can create a connection with the database and then you need to establish that connection so that your application can talk with the database connection establish connection so let's say we name a connection there's a connection object so once you write down this connection right you are getting a lot of options like but you need to select the java.sql one means this connection object should come from java.sql so select the first option you are seeing a lot of the imports right but if you select any other import it won't work you need to uh, select this java.sql so i have let's name this as connection and let's null, uh, initialize it to null now okay now what we need to do we need to use a try block and in this try block what we need to do we need to load our driver 
we need to basically load our driver so we will write down the steps load driver so we are using mysql so when we are using mysql we need to provide uh, uh, we need to provide the driver how we can basically load this so for mysql you need to provide this com dot mysql dot cj dot jdbc dot driver so this is required this is required to load your driver so see as soon as i wrote this right i started getting exception like add catch clause because this can so this is like some way in which you can like understand how to fix this exception you will get a error and then it will ask you unhandled exception class not found so this piece of code can throw you class not found exception so that's why it's asking you to add this catch clause so let me try to add this catch clause here class not found exception and then there's another step like you need to establish this connection so i'll write down connection equal to there is some driver manager in this in jdbc so we need this driver manager and then we click on get connection so let's click on get connection and you need to provide some connection parameters in this connection parameters basically we are trying to establish this jdbc connectivity so we will need to write jdbc then what type of uh, uh, client are we using what type of database are we co uh, connecting to so we are connecting mysql so we'll write down here mysql and then since this mysql is on my local as of now right so i'll write down local host since this mysql client is in my local as of now right so this will i need to like write this mysql uh, provide the local host and mysql you are started you have already started this mysql server right so this runs runs on the default port of 3306 so we need to like provide the port and then i have created one db that is test db i need to provide the name of the db like test db so i'll explain this once more so what are the things that we have mentioned over here this is like this is like this jdbc you can think of like a protocol and then mysql is sub protocol and then you have your port sorry host and then after that you have this your port and then you have your database name since so this is the format that it needs to be so suppose you are using oracle so once you use your oracle you need to replace this mysql with oracle and then localhost will be same so oracle runs on default some different port so you will need to provide that port number here but let's say we are using mysql for now so we'll keep it like this and we started getting another error right so this piece of code can't give us unhandled exception for sql so we need to add a catch clause here as well so we are expecting this type of exceptions in our program so that is why we are uh, handling this in the catch block so what we have done we have loaded our driver 
I can write this established connection here. It would be appropriate. Establish connection here. So we we have loaded the driver first step. We have established the connection with our database. Now what we need to do. So now we will write. OK, one more thing. In this connection parameter, we need to provide the username and password as well. So while we were initializing the database, we, need, we had created one username and password. So I'll provide the username and then I'll provide the password as well. So now our connection is established. Third step is we need to create a prepared statement interface. So these are like fixed steps to uh, these are these steps should be fixed in creating the JDBC connectivity. So what we would do is let's create a prepared statement. This prepared statement is a interface. It would help in processing your queries. So let's now write down a query. Creating query. Creating SQL query. Let's write down a query now. We have seen this select query on our uh, MySQL editor, right? Select star from employee. So employee is the table name from which we want to basically query this data. So we have written our query. And now what we need to do is we need to use our prepared statement interface. And we need to get connection dot prepare statement. We need to use this connection object and to call this prepared statement method. And here we want to pass our SQL query that we created. So this prepared statement will help us in processing the information. And what information we need to like get from our uh, database. So employee, that employee ID table contains employee ID that was of integer type. And then it contains one string, string name. And oh, what was the other attribute? I think we had like department as well, right? String department. So let me again go back and verify this. Yeah, employee ID, name and department. See, these are the three fields, employee ID, name and department. So that's why I want to query these three fields. So I've created three variables for that. So now let's try to do some operation on this. We will need a result set. We will need a result set which basically keeps the records. So let's say when we ran our query, we got like five records. So that five records will be kept in this result set object. So that's why we are creating a result set. And result set would require the state prepared statement interface dot execute query. When we do a execute query, we basically are trying to execute that query and trying to get that result set. So once we do this, we are able to get that result set. Now we would need to, so this result set, let's say has like five or 10 records. So we will need to iterate over this result set and try to print out everything, right? So we will do this while result set dot next Result set dot next checks that if there are still records in this in this result set. So let's say 
we need to get the employee id so what you can do result set dot get integer so you can pass this integer and you can pass the field name you have to provide the field name exactly in proper cases you need to provide this like this and then you query name is equal to result set so name was of type string so you would pass something like get string and then name now let's query for the department department equal to result set dot get string and then department so once we have done this let's try to print this out system dot out dot print ln employee id then let's I'll try to print out name and last let's try to print out department let's try to run this program now I think we have everything in place so we should be able to run this program and also one step we forgot right okay this is like uh, i'll write down the documentation here it says that this is easy for you to follow along later as well extracting result set and after this we need to like close everything means we have created this result set we need to close this as well once our work is done so we will close this result set we'll close this prepared statements as well and then we need to close our connection as well so see once our job is done once we are able to retrieve all the records we have to basically close this result set we have to close this prepared statement we have to close the connection because if there are like lot of stale connections active so this can lead to memory issues in your program so that's why we would do this let's try to run our program see we are able to fetch the records right from the database we are able to fetch this records from the database so if you see this right we were having this six records in the database and our program our java application wanted to connect to the data layer and that is why we needed something like this and we followed these steps so what steps we followed we need we needed a driver and that driver was for connecting to your mysql client so this is for connecting to your mysql database you need to provide this com.mysql.cj.jdbc.driver so once your driver is loaded you need to establish your connection so when i'm trying to establish the connection i need to use this driver manager so basically your driver will help you to get the connection and in this connection you need to pass the connection parameters so you need to pass the protocol as jdbc sub protocol as mysql if it was oracle you would have passed oracle and then you need to pass host host is basically local host and then you need to pass the port this was the name of your db test db if you go here you see that db here right this is test db that we created so this is the test db and then while creating the db you provided some username let's say you provided root as the username and as the password you provided something as welcome one next step was we needed the prepared statement interface to process our queries and next is 
we created the SQL query. Let's say we created this SQL query select star from employee. Then our prepared statement, uh, we got the connection from the, we actually got the prepared statement interface. So connection dot prepare statement. And in this method, we need to pass our query, the query that we created. Now, what we need to do, we need to extract the result set. So for extracting the result set, JDBC has provided us a result set interface. So we need to use this. So using the prepared statement, we will execute the query. So dot execute query is basically used for selecting the queries, means fetching records. So once we have got all the records in this result set, we need to iterate over this while result set dot next. And we need to get it with the help of the field name. So if we go to our DB, we see that we have three fields, right? Employee ID, name, and department. So what we would do, result set dot get int employee ID. And name is basically of type string. So we would do result set dot get string name. And department is again of type string, result set dot get string. And then we would print out all these values. And once we are done this, we would need to have to close this result set. We would have to close this prepared statement and we would have to also close the connection. If you don't do these three steps, also your program will run fine. But what happens? In some cases, you might run out of memory. So, uh tj is there any way we can do the sql output to different data format instead of text okay um what do you mean by different data format instead of text means whatever uh, data that we had was in text format in the sql right so we are able to uh, like print out in that format I uh, say any way we can do the SQL output to different data format. So your result set will basically contain your data. So you can like try to print it out in using this or you can, uh, you can do something like uh, you can try to create one uh, employee object itself. And in that employee object, what you can do uh, uh, TJ, what you can do, you can create one employee object and try to populate that employee object and then try to print out that employee object as well. Means you can create one employee class, you can create employee ID, name and department and then what you can do, you can do a employee ID dot set employee ID and then you can use this result set to set that data. So then what you will have you can have the entire data in the form of a Java object and as required whenever you can like print out that. Did you get it? Can it be JSON format output in the console? Uh, you can try to like search uh, if there can be any JSON format. Uh, means there are like JSON formatters available as well. So you can try to like print out that in the JSON format as well. Means we will be dealing with JSON format a lot while we go in Spring Boot because all your entire output will be in JSON format. Mostly, most of the output will be in JSON format. And while we are interacting with the database, we will see how JSON structures can be utilized to get the output. So let's leave it for here. We will, I'll show you once we start like Spring Boot because our responses would be mostly in like uh, JSON format. So for the simplicity of this Java database connectivity, I am showing this information in the text format itself. But once we try to like uh, study about the Spring Boot and all, so all your uh, input and output responses would be basically in J JSON format. So we'll see that once we start Spring Boot. 
so everyone is able to follow this example right now let's say i want to let's say i want to basically um insert something in the database as well let's say i want to insert something in the database i could use this example let me try to uh, use a different example insert data uh, let's say insert uh, let's say we will use the student uh, table now we want to enter some information in the student table student jdbc demo i'll create one main method and i'll copy this jargons from here means the steps would be again same so what i would do i will copy these things here and I'm again loading the driver, establishing the connection, pre uh, creating that prepared statement interface. And this time I would try to insert something. I would basically try to insert something into the table. So I will change my query insert into, I would insert into the student table, insert into student. And the student table basically had some three fields like ID, name and address. So let me try to copy this. And let me try to like copy this and this as well. So insert into student. I want to insert these values. And let's say these values were already there. So I'll insert some different value. Andrew let's say so i want to use this particular query insert into student table i want to insert id name and address and i'm passing these three values to id name and address now what i want to do is prepare statement connection dot prepare statement sql and i don't want these th th uh, things right so i'll remove this one I don't want this while loop as well because I have to insert to a database insert to the database and this was for prepare statement so what I will next do is prepare statement dot execute update so this is the method when you want to insert something to the database we saw that execute query when we want to fetch something from the database. So execute query. Execute query is basically used for fetching data from DB. And this execute update is used for update operations. For update operations on the DB. So I've done prepared statement dot execute update and I don't want this result set. So let me try to remove this one and let me try to remove this result set object as well. So see, all the steps are same. Loading the driver is same. Establishing the connection is same. Preparing statement interface is same. Creating SQL queries also same. It's just that we are inserting something into the database. So insert into student and these three values we want to insert. So we are using our prepared statement to pre, uh, get, uh, process this query. So we need to pass this SQL query here. And once we have done this, so what we need to do is we need to 
run this execute update method on this particular prepared statement let's try to run this and we will validate from the database if our so i'll show you the table now first before running this so when i do a select star from student everyone uh, kindly see this when i do this select star from student i just have a single record with the id 1 name john and address ca now when i try to run this i should have one more record because we are inserting these values so let's try to run this okay we have run our program let's try to run this query again see we got one more record here right so we were successfully able to insert one record in the database in the table student so our objective was achieved so we had seen how we can use JDBC connection to talk to communicate between the application that is your Java program and your data layer that is your database your data layer consists of tables and those tables contain some information about any entity and you want to fetch those information or you want to like insert some information do some update to those information so all those things you can do with this JDBC API this JDBC API basically provides you library for doing those things so this was like the example for JDBC so let's go to our slides so we have covered these things we have covered this JDBC connectivity example as well so this was all about JDBC like Java database connectivity anyone has any concerns over this JDBC you have any questions okay so we'll move to one more module this is a very small module and this is like reflection so there's another topic like reflection in Java and means this is like very less used only sometimes for writing like unit test cases and uh, one more thing before starting reflection I would say never use reflection while writing your code base in production means whatever code code you are writing in the application never use this reflection phenomena for writing your code only if you write some kind of JUnit tests uh, you can use this reflection so this is only used for like writing some kind of test cases and if you want to write down some test cases in your let's say some JUnit test cases then you can use this reflection so we'll see this is a very small topic so it would hardly take like 5-10 minutes so we'll see how you can use this reflection so uh, reflection helps you to like get the class field and method names without even creating an object so as of now what we saw if you want to basically call an uh, call any method or uh, call any instance variable you used to create object of the class right so even if you don't want to create that particular object you can get the values from that particular class and that is basically achieved with the help of reflection so see what reflection basically does it helps you to get the class of an object it helps you grab information about a types modifier constructor fields means you can uh, like fetch anything from the class suppose a class has a constructor it has some methods it has some super class so you can get those information from reflection and you can get the contract of the type inter interface means what is the interface that is available in that particular uh, class or interface you can get those things as well and at runtime you can what uh, you can do set and get process on an object unknown field so basically 
whatever fields you have in your class whatever methods you have in your class reflection helps to process them at the runtime without even creating an object so you are able to access the fields methods or any super class or any interface without even creating the object so that is the benefit of this reflection so we'll see along how we can we'll see with the help of example what we can do with the help of reflection so uh, let me try to uh, create a new package let me name this package as reflection let me name this as reflection demo and let's try to create a main method here okay let's let's try to create one class as well here let's try to create a class here let's name these classes account and let's name this classes bank account let's provide some fields here let's have some methods here let's try to create some constructor generate constructor let's try to also generate some getters and setters we'll use this id's feature of generating the getters okay these methods would help us to get the id get the amount and this constructor would help me to initialize this data members we have seen this all along our course right we have already done this along so now that we have our bank account cl class created let's try to go in this particular reflection demo uh, example we'll try to get the let's see if we need to get some information from this bank account class so we have this class dot for name method in this and what you want to basically pass you need to pass the let's say i want to pass this path and i want to pass the bank account class so i have provided the path of the bank account class and see this is again throwing some complaints that you have to handle the exception and whenever you use this class dot for name you are you can get a class not found exception so let's try to handle this so you can do this way as well you can use throws class not found exception here or alternative way was you could use your try and catch block to handle this exception so let's try to go ahead and use this method set get declared methods so i'm getting an error for an import so see method again when you see this method you have a lot of imports available but you need to select that java dot lang dot reflect so let's try to select this one and let's try to print out this 
let's say methods available let me try to run a loop and let me try to let me try to convert it to a string let's see if you are able to print the method names here see we are able to print the method names right along with the signature we had two methods in this bank account class one is get id and one is get amount so this see we did not create the object of this bank account class did you notice we did not create the object of the bank account class still we are able to get the information we are able to get some information like methods available we are able to get the id get the amount it means we are able to see these methods whichever are declared so this is the use case of our reflection phenomena without even creating object you are able to fetch the method names now let's go ahead and try to do it let's see if we can fetch out the constructor names again this will also give you a an array object you can use it this way or you can use it this way constructor c dot get constructors again what you would do is use something like this we would again print out constructors available this would be a constructor c dot to string okay i'm getting some error okay this is a duplicate variable so that's why i was getting an error let's name it as ct ct dot to string let me try to run this program now see constructors available i'm able to fetch the constructor details as well now let's say i want to fetch some of the fields which are there in this class so what i would do there's something called as field sorry field so again see field is coming from different imports but we would use the one from the java imports uh, java dot reflect imports fields we would use c dot get fields and again what we would do we would try to print out the details so let's try to print out the details well, okay let's try to print out fields available and let me try to iterate over that field dot to string let's convert this to a string and then print it out so let me try to run this again see okay we are not able to get the fields available okay this was because this were private fields okay let's try to make this public am i able to get this now see now i am able to get this okay this is also one very good example of how your access specifier works see in the bank account class this id is public and this amount is private so you know 
by definition right your private is only available within the class and your public is available outside the class and outside of the package as well that is why when you do this fields available you are able to get the id but you are not able to get the amount why because amount is private the public id you are able to get it so this is a simple demo of the reflection we would we can sometimes use this reflection in writing junit test cases but this is not recommended to use any time in the code because reflex reflection basically breaks some of the oops concept means you have like oops concept right like abstraction inheritance polymorphism and encapsulation so reflection basically tends to violate those principles so we basically don't use it often so this was one simple topic that i want to just touch upon you have some knowledge on this as well so these were the topics that i wanted to cover today the jdbc connectivity uh, topic and reflection topic reflection is a very small topic but jdbc connectivity that is like important and uh, uh, means there are other ways to connect to the database as well when you use like your spring boot uh, framework right at that time it becomes even more easier you need you don't even need to write that jdbc uh, uh, loading the drivers creating connection those things as well means there are some very simple configurations that you need to do and then you can get connected to your database and straight away you can start writing your queries but this was without using any framework as of now we are not using any framework like spring boot framework and as such right so we uh, we were still able to connect to our database and query our database we could do insert queries update queries select queries and anything with the database so Uh, we have covered jdbc connectivity and reflection today if you have any questions you can uh, ask them or otherwise i'll conclude the session for today and tomorrow we'll be starting spring boot so kindly be available okay if anyone does not have any questions uh, we can conclude the call for today thank you everyone for joining yeah thank you please yeah thank you everyone